What's up guys, it's Dull Matter here, and today we are going to be reacting to another Major Kill video. So this one is, what did the Traitor Primarchs do after the Horus Heresy? So, uh, some of them obviously died, although they might have been resurrected because, you know, weird warp stuff. Um, and also the, you know, some people are immortal and, yeah, you know, Warhammer's weird. Uh, as for the rest of them, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so... I'm interested to see what happens to them. So, uh, yeah, I guess link to the original video down below and let's jump into it. G'day, guys and gal. Primarchs are the creme de la creme. Shrouded in destiny, these literal demigods are second only to their big shiny daddy. And Crocs. Everyone is second to Crocs. In their prime, each Primarch conquered thousands of worlds. Their very existence causing strain on the fabric of time and space. The return of Gilliman has pulled the Imperium back from the jaws of total collapse and has made defeating Chaos once again an option, whilst the legacy of the long dead Horus continues to plague mankind to this very day. So it begs the question, if Chaos is able to walk away from the Horus heresy with seven intact Primarchs and the Imperium lost like all of theirs soon after the Emperor cosplayed as Stephen Hawking, how the fuck hasn't Chaos won? Well, it turns out that joining a faction called Chaos isn't very good for your organizational skills. And if there's one thing I know, it's that to conquer the galaxy, you need to be organized. Gilliman hasn't pussy whipped the galaxy back into the Imperium. I thought that was going to be like a, a going into an ad or something for like Skillshare. That's where you can learn organizational skills on Skillshare. Favor because he can punch really hard or, you know, destroy your brain from behind. He's done it because he has out of this world organizational skills. So what is the Traitor Primarch's excuse? What have they been up to since the Horus Heresy? Today we'll go over what each of the Traitor Primarchs have been doing since Horus bit the bullet, before talking about where they are today. If we're feeling cheeky, we might even make some educated guesses as to what they'll do next. Let's get into it. We'll start off with Horus, because chronological order is overrated. Horus is special, not because he nearly killed the Emperor or, you know, lost all his hair despite the 30th millennium probably having great anti-hair loss creams, but because out of all the Primarchs, only he was completely obliterated from existence. Whilst other Primarchs like Ferris and Sanguinius did die, there is a sliver of their soul or presence still lurking about. Horus, on the other hand, got cum dumped so hard that his soul has ceased to exist. So he's been doing literally nothing since the Horus Heresy. In saying that, he was cloned once. However, Primarch clones without Primarch souls are about as useful as a Velcro dildo. Hence, Abaddon was able to clap the clone <laughs> of Horus like it was nothing. Now we have Fulgrim, who may as well have died considering how little he's done. By the end of the Horus Heresy, like the now. Emperor's children and their Primarch were completely fucked in the head. They stopped attacking the Imperial Palace during the Siege of Terror and instead just rounded up scared civilians and then turned them into cocaine. I'm not even kidding, that's exactly what they did. <laughs> Once the traitors had lost, they all pissed off to go do their own weird Empress children shit, such as Russian starfish orcs or masturbate with sandpaper. Before Fulgrim completely retreated, he baited Gilliman into a duel, which is a pretty- Part of me wants to know what a Russian starfish is, and part of me really does not. ...fucking stupid thing of Gilliman to get baited into. Turns out a gigantic rape snake with four arms is more powerful than a Roman Aryan with a flaming sword. Hence Gilliman was put into a 10,000 year coma. After this, Fulgrim retreated back to the Eye of Terror and he created his own pleasure planet which he rarely ever leaves because, you know, it's a pleasure planet. He did however leave it once to answer Rylanor's distress beacon on Isfan 3. Rylanor as we know is the best fucking dude around and was able to be so honorable and noble that the Thousand Sun Sorcerers that were with Fulgrim allowed Rylanor to blow up the planet, killing them just to inconvenience Fulgrim. Fulgrim's yeah, demonic body would recover now. from this, but his pride never would, hence he retreated back to his pleasure planet to suck on some demon titties. He remained there until the return of Gilliman, which caused Fulgrim to attempt to corrupt Gilliman to chaos, which, you know, obviously failed. Since then, Fulgrim has been spotted in real space for the first time in thousands of years, leading what remains of the Empress children to wreak some havoc. Someone who has been- Man, he is fucking massive. I don't know if that's like official art or fan art. It's so hard to tell with some of the 40k art, because like, it seems like there's like an official style and then everyone just kind of does that style when they do their fan art. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> that, he is just fucking huge like massive like he because 
the Gilman's like what, damn near ten feet tall, right? And he makes Gilman look tight. He's got to be like fifty feet tall, bro. He's got to be at least fifty feet tall. More absent than Fulgrim is Pertorabo. Purdy was the first traitor to abandon the siege of Terra, even before it was clear the traitors had lost. He did this because he was doing all the work whilst his brothers were off railing the ashes of millions of people. However, he still wanted to show Rogel who was boss, hence he baited him into attacking an unbeatable fortress. Needless to say, Rogel got his ass whooped and for his efforts, Perturabo was elevated to Demon Prince of Chaos Undivided, much to my and a lot of fans dismay. They didn't have to make Purdy a Demon Prince and it just doesn't suit his character, but whatever. As Purdy is a Prince of Chaos Undivided, he doesn't really have to do what the Chaos Gods want, only if they all agree on something which pretty much never happens. So he hasn't had to go fight the Space Wolves so he hasn't done fucking shit. Ultramar like his brothers have to. In saying that, he hasn't just been idle. In the Eye of Terror, Purdy engaged in a massive battle against Mortarion and dueled him non-stop for seven hours. Eventually, Nurgle's pestilence and attrition began to overwhelm the Iron Warriors, hence Purdy was forced to retreat. Yeah, well, I was gonna I say, isn't Mortarion? Just <clears throat> made up or something, because they soon teamed up to create a computer virus, which was also a literal virus. This got uploaded to the Mechanicus's networks, and <laughs> numerous Forge worlds to fall, as their machines turned into demons and shit. Gotta keep your antivirus up to date there, Mars. How many times have I told you about this? Purdy would play a reasonably I'm passive role STDs from a computer. Crusades, offering him advice and weapons, but not his own battle prowess. However, with the fall of Cadia, the big man himself is kicked into gear, sending out his iron warriors to siege some of the most heavily fortified worlds in the Imperium. For Purdy, if it ain't a challenge, it ain't worth doing. Now we have Lorga, the man who started the Horus Heresy and the man who gained the least amount out of it. Lorga <laughs> wasn't even present during the Siege of Terra because Horus beat the shit out of him when Lorga tried to stage a coup. Since then, he's done a lot of sulking. If you think Perturabo feels underappreciated, then boy, let me talk about Lorga. When the traitors had all fled to the Eye of Terra, something followed them. A dark mass of ravens, vengeance incarnate, Corvus Corax. See, the Raven Lord had figured out how to embrace his inner war powers, hence he was able to turn himself into a demon, but like, not a chaos demon. As such, the word bearers had a really shitty time, with Mr. Raven slaughtering them like pigs. Lorgar came to Corvus and was like, I have ascended to demonhood and unlocked my power. You are nothing compared to me. And Corvus was like, yeah, cool story, bitch boy. And then he proceeded to kick the ever-living shit out of Lorgar forcing him to run away. Man, Lorgar's just Lord taking like constant Lord L's in any fight he gets in. 10,000 years, but I reckon he's just been playing a fatal game of hide and seek with Corvus. Pussy. I hope he comes <laughs> back into the law for a bit to fight Gilliman, just for Corvus to arrive so the G-Man and the Raven Daddy can kick the shit out of him together. Would be a really wholesome brother bonding moment. Next up is Conrad. Over the course of the Horus Heresy and even the Great Crusade, Conrad's sanity had been slipping more and more. By the time Horus was dead, Conrad's brain was cooked as shit. He took his legion onto a world and made a palace out of living flesh. Bit grim derp in my opinion, like how the fuck would that even work? I mean, grim derp. <laughs> Conrad sat in his flesh fortress for a bit until an assassin arrived to kill him. Now he easily could have killed the assassin, however he wanted to prove a point, so he let the assassin cut his head off. R.I.P. Conrad, missed by literally nobody. <laughs> There's a theory that one of the jewels he was wearing was actually a soul gem that his consciousness now resides in, but nothing has come of that as of yet. Now we have Materian, who has been a busy little bee, buzz buzz. Considering he's the champion of the big fat lazy ass god, Mortarian has been very active, leading countless wars within the Eye of Terror and real space against the other forces of Chaos and the Imperium. When the heresy ended, Mortarian fled to the plague planet and he recreated it in the vision of his home planet of Barbarus. He even put himself at the highest peak, just like his Lich King father did all those years ago, hence completing Mortarian's hypocrisy. Just like Fulgrim, Morty would get his own embarrassing encounter. After killing the Supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights, none other than Kaldor motherfucking Drago kicked his ass. He carved the name onto his heart and then he banished him back into the warp. That's got a sting. Morty would go on to capture quite a few systems in real space and use them to launch the Plague Wars against Ultramar. This war was devastating and it looked like Morty could win, until Gilliman arrived and even the odds. 
Morty would shit in his hand and throw it at Gilliman, whilst Gilliman responded by spraying multi-purpose cleaner on Morty before rubbing it in with a ShamWow. It was a battle for the gods. Eventually... <laughs> it's such a dumb fucking joke, but it's so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> multi-purpose cleaner and a ShamWow. Oh my god. Nurgle wanted Morty to retreat to defend the Nurgleite worlds in real space from the other gods of chaos, but Morty wasn't super down with that. He wanted to kill Gilliman, and he defied Nurgle and he injected G-Men with the God Blight, a virus that could kill a Primarch. Gilliman then died. But he survived! So the opening of the Great Rift had woken the Emperor up, because there was so much fucking warp juice everywhere now. Hence the Emperor possessed Gilliman, kicked Morty's ass, then proceeded to kick Nurgle's ass, like Nurgle genuinely took some damage, and it seemed as if the forces of the Plague God are going to be benched for a decent while. Especially since Morty has been a naughty boy and is now going to get quite the spanking from his green papa. Speaking of spanking, we now have Magnus, who is the other traitor Primarch who has been quite active in attempting to fuck over the Imperium. Magnus's nipple armor Key is word so here weird is to me. When Lehman broke Magnus's back and then Magnus was crudely teleported to safety, his soul was shattered. Hence, in the years following the end of the Horus Heresy, he spent a lot of time putting himself back together. The issue is that the majority of his good and kind soul shards have been either destroyed or been made inaccessible by Magnus. Hence all that remains of him is bitterness and power. Clearly not enough though, as he has invaded Fenris like two or three times now, and each time the space wolves were able to send him screaming back to hell. But Major Kill, he does a lot of damage to Fenris each time, and he stabbed out one of Lehman's hearts. Why does no one remember that? Timmy, you Magnus sympathizing cock junkie. Silence. Ruining Fenris is like nuking the Middle East. It's already a fucking shithole. So <laughs> ruining it doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> oh my god, that's... Thing. After multiple humiliations, Magnus decided he would try and kill Gilliman before Gilliman could get to the Emperor. Well, lo and behold, Magnus was humiliated again and sent back to the warp, again. He finally decided to embark on some more realistic goals and has since retaken Prospero, his original homeworld, and even brought his planet of sorcerers into real space. Love him or hate him, you can't say Magnus hasn't given it a red hot go. Now onto the angry Angron. We give Angron a fair bit of shit on this channel, but to his credit, he has tried his best to do some stuff since the Horus Heresy ended. A lot more than Lorgar and Fulgrim at least. His first act since the Heresy was to attack the Imperium with 50,000 Chaos Marines, and they actually did some damage. Over 300 years, they took over, which is, you know, code for fucking raped, 70 sectors. However, the damage they did was temporary, and they were eventually driven back. Angron would then re-emerge and attack the world of Armageddon, only to have his sword broken and his ass drop kicked back to hell. Angron was almost re-summoned back to Armageddon recently the after the looks, fall of Cadia. Like... However, with the help of some friendly salamanders, the Imperium was able to put a stop to that shit. Probably for the best. There are way more interesting traitor Primarchs that deserve their time in the sun. And finally, what is Alpharius Amegan up to? Well, Alpharius, my favorite Amegan, Primark. died to Rogel Dawn during the Siege of Terra, leaving Alpharius, or maybe Amegon, to lead the scattered Alpha Legionnaires. I'm of the opinion that Amegan still lives and is subtly influencing the Alpha Legion to aid the Imperium, but considering we haven't actually seen him since the Heresy, it's hard to know for sure. I've dived into this topic a lot more in my Alpha Legion videos, because there's just so many breadcrumbs and theories to unpack, but for now, just remember, Amegan is currently doing something, or maybe it's Alpharius. With the recent spotlight on Magnus, Morty and Angron, it's time for the- They're definitely my favorite, I guess technically twin Primarchs. Um... I just, I love the story around them. I think we were watching Baldemort's video on it, and he's like, you know, he narrates a lot of the actual, like, book stuff, and it's just so well written. And and especially for, like, you know, 40K standards, which I've noticed a lot of this shit is like, <laughs> you know, it's it's the unfortunate thing about a lot of, like, fantasy and sci-fi writing. It's not really that great, um, but this is really well written. For them to get subbed out, I think the return of Lorgar and Purdy would be really interesting and open up the door for the next loyalist Primarch to wake up from his slumber in the bowels of the rock. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of hentai, and $5 per month give you access to the Major Kill sticker, which is about to be sent out. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button. This must have been like back when he first started peddling that, because, yeah, how old is this? A year old? This is one of his most viewed videos, I think.
I think it's the second most viewed video. <clears throat> um, so my, my, I'm get, I don't know if it's because of the topic or just because it's older, but anyway, yeah, that was uh, interesting. So, but basically, most of them we don't know what they're doing right now, <clears throat> which makes sense because I mean we're talking about something that happened a thousand years ago in the lore. Um, yeah, Alfarius and, o and Omegon are definitely the ones that I, I want to know the most about, though, when it comes to what they're going to do. I really hope they bring them back, uh, either through, like, a game or something, because I just, they're, like, that is by far the best written story in 40k, in my opinion, at least out of everything I've seen so far. Um, oh, the one guy, I, he's one of the underlings for uh, the word bearers. I can't remember his name. It's Tal something. He has a really well-written story as well, but... Uh, yeah, anyway, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.